Welcome back to the classroom. I'm Mr. Wong. Today we'll be looking at uh, solubility equilibria problems. We're going to be using the 2021 HSC chemistry paper, uh, question 27, if you want to use that as reference. We have an experiment uh, to determine the KSP value for lithium phosphate. There were five samples of lithium ion solutions prepared and a different solution of phosphate was added to each of them. Column 2 and column 3 of the table shows the values before any reaction occurs. So here are our two different concentrations. We have five samples and we can see from the observations sample 4 and sample 3 was where we had a strong precipitation occurring. Question A, it says calculate the range within which the KSP value of lithium phosphate lies. So under what scenario? So remember KSP is where uh, the equilibrium occurs, where we get a precipitation. So we need to consider, I think it's quite obvious, we need to consider sample number four, because that's where we see um, the white precipitate occurring. And probably a bit less obvious to some people is we actually need to observe sample number three. Why don't we use sample number five? Because we've already reached um, the precipitation. We have already achieved the equilibrium, so to speak. And therefore, this sample five here is sort of a red herring of our question. And we actually want to know the range using the concentration prior to um, the reaction occurring and also just after it did. Okay, so we're going to try and calculate the uh, value of Q for the following two and then we have some idea of where the range should be. Before we do, what we need to do is write the relevant dissociation equation. So in my problem here, I have lithium. 3 phosphate, like so, that is a solid, and that dissociates into lithium plus as an aqueous solution, and phosphate 3 minus, again, aqueous solution. Okay, as you can see from the formula here, we have lithium of three and we also have only one phosphor uh, phosphate ion here so that's what we have okay so the next bit is to write my um, equilibrium expression so my QSP let's call it QSP of sample number three and that is going to be our uh, two products here my lithium and my phosphate. I'm also going to do the exact same one but for my sample number four. So that's what we have right here. Okay, now I'm going to substitute the two values into my relevant equation and hopefully we get a relevant value or a particular range that we should be looking at. So for the first one, lithium 0 0.15, power to 3, phosphate 0 0.010, and we'll do the same for this one down here. Okay, let's put that in our calculator and see what values we get. Okay, so the first one we have is 0 0.00003375. If we look at our second one, 0 0.00003375. So that's our value there, and that's our value there. So it says calculate the range within which KSP value would lie. This is the range that we have here. 
it, the reason why we know that has to be uh, between these two values because we know that originally we went from no precipitation uh, to achieving a white precipitate. So it has to be within the range of these two concentrations of phosphate. So I'm going to write down uh, range of KSP in this context lithium phosphate is between our values here to our value, so 0 0.0000375 to 0.0003375. And that's how you do problem A. Let's have a look what else we have with this problem. So we move on to question B, and it says justify one way in which the procedure of this investigation could be improved to increase the accuracy of the calculated results. So before I get into um, what the solution for this problem is, let's actually think back, what is accuracy? What does it actually mean? Accuracy in science means how close are we in finding the exact result, okay? So what, what was the method of knowing if we were close to achieving, in this case, the KSP value of lithium phosphate, okay? So I'm going to go through two ways we can do it. The first method uh, will make a bit more sense for those who've only done module 5. Um, and the second method would make a lot more sense if you've done module six, uh, particularly in the form of titration already. So our first method is actually to increase the range of the phosphate um, concentration. So what do I mean by that? So you can see there is a gap between the 0 0.01 to the 0 0.1. So I wanna increase the range of concentrations of phosphate. By increasing that particular range, I will get a more precise point at which the precipitate forms or when it is about to form. And from that, I should be able to calculate a more accurate value for K. So let's write that down first and we'll talk about what the second method is. Okay. So to increase accuracy, Students should use a larger sample range of the concentration of phosphate um, so greater range of phosphate from our 0.01 moles um, to our 0.1 mole, this uh, greater ranges of concentration within the stated or oh, actually let's say greater sample size of concentrations within the stated range would allow us to find the uh, exact moment the precipitate forms and therefore the more accurate K 
KSP value. Okay, so that's the method we're going to go through here. Now, I did allude to um, in module six, for those who have done already, we can do a for a, a method known as titration. Okay, um, for those who don't know what titration is, let me just quickly explain. So in titration, we are reacting two chemicals together. Okay. One of known concentration. And I guess in this case, we can use one of known concentration as well. It doesn't really matter in this case. And we have a fixed volume for a particular um, particular ion. In this case, it could be a particular concentration of phosphate. And we also have the known concentration of lithium. So we have lithium here, we have phosphate here. And we do drip by drip, um, a controlled introduction of additional volumes of lithium into my phosphate solution. And at the moment in which it begins to turn into precipitate, we should be able to actually look at what the exact volume that we used uh, from the lithium into my phosphate. So that would probably be an uh, even better uh, option in terms of finding the exact point at which the precipitation occurred. But what we have here also works as well. So I would say the method that we've listed here, uh, it would still open us up to a potential range of where the KSP is, but the method we're using here uh, reduces that error range uh, to a much finer margin. If we use the titration method, uh, we're more likely to find the exact point or close to the exact point within a couple of millimeters uh, after a, a trial or two. So there you go. That's what we're talking about when it comes to accuracy. All right, so that will end the video for today. Um, hopefully this has given you a better understanding of how to solve solubility equilibria problems and also how we use accuracy in, or how I guess we can assess the accuracy of an experimental result. If you found the video useful, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you next time.